Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Ignition Time. I want this video to be the most comprehensive video you'll find on the internet as a guide to all the tax credits you can get through the American Rescue Plan because this is not something I've really seen covered elsewhere. Welcome to our channel everyone. My name is Dr. Nitin Choda. You'll see some information about me on your screen. You'll learn more about who I am and what my journey has been like. I have the fortune and the privilege to live the American dream and I want to help you live your American dream. Let's just jump right in. The American Rescue Plan enhanced the child tax credit, earned income tax credit and the child and the dependent care tax credit. The American Rescue Plan also introduced a recovery rebate credit for the stimulus checks. The first stimulus check of $1,200, the second stimulus check of $600 and the third stimulus check of $1,400. Now I want our viewers and subscribers to know that these changes are specifically aimed towards low income earners and they are aimed at low income earners and they are temporary and will apply to tax season next year, meaning for 2021 for the income that you earn in 2021, unless Congress extends the new rules or makes them permanent. So let's start with the recovery rebate credit that allows individuals to claim a part or whole of any stimulus checks that they may actually have missed. There have been three stimulus checks so far. So if you or anyone you know actually missed out or didn't get the stimulus check at, at all, that is where you would use the recovery rebate credit. So remember the first stimulus check was $1,200. The second was $600. They were technically advanced payments of the 2020 recovery rebate credit. So taxpayers who got the full amounts are not eligible for additional money, but some may qualify for more aid if they did not receive a first or a second check or if they received a smaller amount of the first or the second check than what they were entitled for. So this may have happened, by the way, if the IRS did not have the most recent tax return. Now, the income that the IRS has on file could also disqualify certain individuals because high income earners are not eligible to receive stimulus checks. Let's take an example. Let's say someone lost income in 2020, but they did quite well in 2019. Now, if the IRS does not have the 2020 tax return, then the IRS is going to go off the 2019 tax return. And then the IRS is going to look at the 2019 tax return and say, hey, wait a minute, this person doesn't need a stimulus check. And therefore, they this individual may not get the stimulus check. So the IRS, again, may not have issued payments to a person in this example because the agency had a 2019 tax return on file and because they you know they assume that this person is doing quite well now such an individual can claim a recovery rebate credit for the tax period this year for 2021 and this will come in the form of a tax refund so these individuals can file and probably should file a 2020 return even if they don't usually file a return the same rule applies for individuals who are supposed to get the $1,400 stimulus checks that were issued in 2021. So these individuals essentially will have to claim a recovery rebate credit in 2022. So that is essentially how this would work because this individual would not get or maybe did not get the $1,400 stimulus check in 2021. So they would file a recovery rebate credit during their 2021 for their 2021 tax return, which will be filed in 2022. So let's be clear about that. Now, generally individuals, singles making more than $75,000 $112,500 for head of households and $150,000 for married couples who file jointly are eligible for full payments. Above that, the checks begin to get phased out. Another thing that the American Rescue Plan did was make the child tax credit more generous. About 80% of families with kids will get a tax cut due to the new rules because of the child tax credits and there'll be more benefits for low income earners. The bottom 20% of parents will actually get an average federal tax cut of $3,270 and under the prior rules, this is what happened in the past, taxpayer, taxpayers could claim a child credit of up to $2,000 per child under the age of 17. The American Rescue Plan raises that to $3,600 for children under the age of 6 and $3,000 for older children. So this legislation also expands the age of qualifying children to allow a credit for 17 year old children. The full tax break would be available to individuals who make up to $75,000 a year, same income thresholds as mentioned earlier, head of households making up to 112,500 and married couples filing jointly who make up to 150,000. This credit phases out for higher income earners. Now, higher income families will generally, I say generally because each situation is different, but will generally get the same benefit 
as the prior law unless they have an eligible 17 year old in which they can get more benefits. So this relief measure also makes the child tax credit fully refundable. So it had in, in the past it had been partially refundable but now thanks to the American Rescue Plan the child tax credit is fully refundable. Taxpayers could only in the past get back up to $1400 but now it is fully refundable. So this that, that structure the older structure largely benefited wealthy families a lower income earner for, for example with no tax liability could only get up to $1400 back and higher income earners could generally claim a large larger value. And here's the interesting thing about 19% of taxpayers eligible for the credit had incomes that were too low to get the maximum. So by default, what was essentially meant to help individuals with children was benefiting the rich in the past and now it is now it is benefiting those who are who essentially are the lowest 20% of the income level. So this is interesting. Now keep in mind that these changes would apply for next year's tax season when you're filing 2021 taxes. So this means when families file their 2021 taxes next year in, in 2022. So in addition, what lawmakers are trying to do is turn this credit into a predictable income stream via advanced payments starting as soon as July this year. Folks, uh, the IRS is going to have their hands full with this. So this would allow low income earners to have the flexibility uh, to essentially deal with ups and downs in their income and especially if they're working seasonal jobs or part-time jobs. So the interesting thing about these advanced cash payments is that these advanced cash payments would be on half the value of the family's credit. The other half will be refunded at tax time next year, which by the way encourages individuals to file tax returns. People who file a 2020 return will be eligible for the advanced payment. Now depending on how the IRS can keep up, the payments will initially be monthly and then will probably switch to quarterly because I can assure you the IRS is completely overloaded. Monthly payments could be as high as $300 per child. Now there is a flip side to all of this. Families may owe money back if they receive a larger advance than they're eligible for. So, you know, this is something brand new folks. So there's going to be kinks in it. Uh, and, you know, things, things change, situations change, income changes, sometimes filing status changes, number of children change. You know, obviously you can, you know, people have more children and therefore the, the, the tax credit increases. So there are some protections for lower income earners and advanced payments are estimates based on the 2020 income tax data and families will be able to update their information or on the IRS website later in the year. Now let's take a look at the earned income tax credit. So what is the earned income tax credit? The earned income tax credit is a refundable tax credit for low income earning working families and the amount of this credit depends on the income and the number of children in these families. Now the benefits of this credit will largely go to individuals without kids, which is uh, which is really interesting. Their maximum benefit has actually tripled from $543 in the past up to $1,502. So this is happening because the income level at which taxpayers can get the maximum credit and at which the maximum credit begins to phase out was changed. So what's the bottom line with this? Approximately 9% of taxpayers will get a tax cut due to these changes and almost all of them will be the bottom 20% of income earners. So the average tax cut is expected to be right around $700. Folks, if you are using an online software to file your taxes, all of these changes should be integrated into the software by the time you file your taxes next year. Folks, it looks like a lot of individuals, specifically the bottom 20% income earners will be paying significantly lower taxes next year, which is super interesting because right around tax time next year is going to be when everyone's gearing up for the midterm elections. Now, the last one is the child and dependent care credit, the child and dependent care credit. So what the American Rescue Plan did is it allowed taxpayers to offset a large share of all the costs associated with childcare and dependent care. So it raised the amount of paid expenses eligible for a credit to $8,000 for one child or dependent and $16,000 for two or more. So that uh, that's up from $3,000 and $6,000 respectively. So the credit which was $3,000 is now $8,000, which was previously $6,000 is now $16,000, which, uh, which is pretty incredible. The law allows households to write off 50% of the expenses as a deduction instead of 35%. This means that taxpayers can get a maximum credit of $4,000 for one child 
we're talking childcare expenses or dependent and $8,000 for two or more. That's up from $1,050 in the past and $2,100 respectively in the past. So essentially, if you're spending money on childcare and, and elder care, you're going to be able to write off a significant portion of these expenses and thereby reduce your federal income tax burden when you file your taxes in 2022. Because remember, this is for tax year 2021. It is projected that about 13% of families with kids will benefit and the benefits tend to skew towards the upper middle class since low income families you know they tend to rely on grandparents or family members to fulfill childcare duties but upper income families generally tend to hire babysitters and actually hire somebody to help them with taking care of their children and they incur childcare expenses i'm talking about the upper income families and then lower income families you know make it make it a bit of a village project because it does take a village to raise a child this credit does phase out at income levels exceeding four hundred thousand dollars because the government believes that if you know if a, if a household's making more than four hundred thousand dollars they don't need a child care credit so that's it everyone everything you need to know about tax credits in the american rescue plan let me know what you think in the comment section below let me know which of these credits might matter to you we'll also include a link in the description section below to the original article from cnbc in this uh, in the description section so make sure you check it out thank you so much for watching please click the like button please subscribe please enable notifications we work very hard on this channel all i ask of you is just take a second of your time to click the like button i would really appreciate that thank you so much i'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode of ignition time take care bye